Yo, 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 Estamos por iniciar el juicio en su contra. Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. Firstly, I would like to thank Moondog151 for supplying today's story. You can find them on Reddit and make sure you follow them as they submit many stories very regularly. Stay tuned now to hear about the Catman or El Hombre Gato. Gilad Sarusi Pereg was born on April the 16th, 1981, in Petah Tikva, Israel. Gilad preferred not to use his father's name, as their relationship was severely strained as his father walked out on them and abandoned Gilad alongside his mother, Piria Sarusi, and four siblings. Gilad, however, was very close with his grandfather, whom he came to view as his father figure, and so, when his grandfather passed away in 2006, the 25-year-old's behaviour began to change drastically, and he would be affected with a psychological disorder that was not fully diagnosed. Gilad was described as an intelligent man before his grandfather died, Having graduated from high school at 16, and by the time he was 24, he was an electronic engineer at the Technion, which is the Israeli Institute of Technology. But as mentioned, soon after his grandfather passed away, his life began to go downhill, with rubbish piling up at his residence, and he was reported numerous times for antisocial behaviour, including harassment, indecent behaviour, and running around the campus naked. His academic studies would begin to suffer, and he also used to gamble, and his gambling debts would begin to pile up. Eventually, his family and the Israeli police decided that the time had come to institutionalise Gilad and give him the help that he needed. Israeli police reports indicated that he had suffered from paranoia, schizophrenia, as well as having committed numerous crimes such as harassment, indecent behaviour in public, destruction of property, violating court orders, and obstructing the police. But when he learned of this happening, he wasted no time in fleeing the country, and eventually arrived at his new home in Mendoza, Argentina, on December 15th, 2007. Gilad would later claim to the authorities that he left Israel not because his family were about to admit him to a psychiatric hospital, but rather because the nation itself had betrayed or deceived him, and that they took his service at the front lines for granted. There were, however, no official records of Gilad having been involved in the military, and according to a relative, when the Israeli authorities came for Gilad's mandatory conscription, they deemed him unfit for service, despite a myriad of articles describing him as a former soldier. When he arrived in Argentina, his neighbours described his looks as that of a European model. However, he acted strangely, including only ever wearing the same outfit every single day. He also approached his neighbours once to ask if it bothered any of them if he was to install a CCTV camera for him to watch the street. Gilad would open up a deli and told his neighbours and anybody that asked that he was from Norway and that his name was Floda Relti, which is actually Adolf Hitler written backwards. He then provided fake passports and documentation to prove it. Gilad lived in a small dwelling that he had constructed himself and soon his appearance would transform as he stopped taking care of himself and would barely even eat, preferring to only consume vitamin compounds instead of food. His neighbours would soon describe him as a strange and lonely man who kept mostly to himself and had a foul odour to him. Some other nicknames that were given to him by his neighbours, who said that he had above average intelligence with an IQ of 180, and then described him as a con artist and a compulsive liar. Later on, he would drop the Floda Relti alias, and instead legally change his name to Nicholas Gil Hareg. The newly named Nicholas didn't think highly of his neighbours, accusing them of theft and drug trafficking, 
on numerous occasions. In 2018, Nicholas would file a lawsuit against an architect whom he had commissioned to build a soccer and tennis court on his property back in 2010. He was claiming that he had been defrauded and that the situation led to immense emotional and psychological distress. As a consequence, he then argued that he was getting addicted to medication. He sought just under 2 million Argentine pesos in compensation, which is approximately $16,500 in today's money. In October 2018, he suddenly ended the lawsuit. He also had 20 businesses registered in his or his mother's name, which he used to write bad checks and would soon face lawsuits over unpaid taxes on his own property. Nicholas's property was valued at 270,000 Argentine pesos, which is about $2,300 in today's money. It would be raided on numerous occasions due to suspicions of arms trafficking and possession of restricted firearms. Despite all of his money, he willingly subjected himself to living in this way. The dwelling he lived in had no basic services such as water or electricity and was very unkempt with filth everywhere. The police during the various visits to his property seized $25,000, 15,000 euros, 3,000 Argentine pesos and an undisclosed number of Israeli shekels. But since he was unemployed, it's unknown where all of this money came from. He also had 40 firearms registered in his name, but very few were found at his house, and Nicholas never made any visits to a firing range to practice his shooting. Despite the money that he had made from his likely illegal activities and the deli that he owned, he lived on the brink of destitution and was actually 9 million pesos in debt. That's around $76,000. The police never found any toilet in his house, and instead, whenever Nicholas needed to urinate or defecate, he opted to do so on the same floor as the mattress which he slept on. He also had an abundance of pornographic magazines and DVDs in his possession. As he had no bathroom whenever he wanted to wash his face, he would trespass onto the nearby cemetery and use one of their taps to wash his hands. Very little is known about Nicholas's life in Argentina, but he would purchase more firearms and the highest amount of ammunition that he could legally own. And in 2018, he would write 46 bad checks, which is where this large 9 million peso debt came from. He is also rumored to have filed a police report over the alleged theft of 11 of his firearms. The only legitimate money he seemed to have was money that his mother would wire to him as she worked for a collections agency back in Israel. On January the 11th, 2019, Nicholas's mother, Piria Sarusi, and aunt Lily Perig traveled to Argentina themselves to see Nicholas, with the two having not flown to Argentina since January 2011. This time the purpose of the visit was to resolve Nicholas's debt issues. Piria, as mentioned, worked for a collections agency, whilst Lily was a university professor and had both Israeli and Australian citizenship. Not a whole lot seems to be known about their meeting with Nicholas, but he did finally shave for the occasion and appeared much more presentable. The two sisters rented an apartment during their stay. Their relatives in Israel grew concerned when they had not heard back from them in a while, and soon Nicholas reported the two missing, stating that when he last saw them, they visited him at his home, and he later escorted them to a bus back to their apartment. With pressure being asserted upon them by the Israeli and Australian governments, the Argentine authorities launched an extensive search operation to find the two sisters. The police checked their apartment and found all of their luggage in place and untouched, meaning that if they had left their apartment, they didn't intend to be out for very long. The police, however, did not believe that they ever made it back and were already suspicious of Nicholas. Part of the reason why they doubted his story was because CCTV cameras from a nearby cemetery showed the women walking in the area, but the camera footage never showed them leaving. 
The search for the two sisters would then be focused entirely around Nicholas's property. This was something that upset him greatly, and he started speaking to the media and accusing the neighbours of being behind the disappearances and stated that he lived in fear of leaving his home. He said, I've been robbed 50 times. They are Bolivians who make a mess here in the whole area and the police do nothing. I cannot leave my house because if I go out, they rob me. That was one quote that he gave to a journalist pointing towards his neighbours as he uttered it. He also explained his large abundance of firearms by saying that his neighbours would have killed him if he didn't have them for protection. He then said, Someone who may have come from Israel went after them to hurt them, or it may be someone who hates me here in the province, hurt them to take revenge on me. The police's visit to Nicholas's house over this matter revealed that not much had changed compared to their last visits, and that his property was still very much in a state of disarray. Only this time he had taken in a number of animals, having 37 pets on his property. Four of them were dogs, and 33 of them were cats. He likely had many more as the police, during their search of the property, found the bones of numerous cats buried beneath his land. He also stockpiled cat food and veterinary medicine, and his floor was stained with not only his own urine and feces, but also that of his animals. The police also found no food meant for human consumption in his home, indicating that he probably ate the cat food as well. Eventually, on January the 18th, police dogs were utilised in an attempt to find the sisters, and when they indicated human remains on Nicholas's property, he was arrested whilst search efforts intensified. On January the 26th, the bodies of Piria Sarusi and Lily Pereg were discovered in a well under a pile of stones. The police then conducted a full forensic examination of Nicholas's home, where they discovered three of the firearms that he had reported stolen, and also a t-shirt, a bag of cement, and cigarette butts stained with blood. DNA was extracted from this, and compared to a toothbrush at the lady's apartment. This ended up being a match, but it was unknown who owned the toothbrush, so it wasn't conclusive enough evidence. The police also interviewed a bus driver who recognised Nicholas and the sisters and testified that they were loudly arguing with one another in a foreign language likely to be Hebrew. Nicholas was charged with two counts of murders and when he heard the charges he said if you don't let me go home to take care of my cats you're going to find a body. Following this threat to himself it led to him being isolated from the other inmates. He showed no signs of regret or sorrow over the news that the two were killed. Meanwhile the bodies of the two ladies were examined and it was determined that his aunt Lily had been shot three times with a revolver while his mother Piria had been beaten to death with signs of a struggle and finally strangled with a lasso. They had also suffered post-mortem injuries with both bodies being pierced with iron in various parts of their body. The police also found that Nicholas had booked a flight to Italy and he also had tickets booked in the name of four of his cats. This flight was however cancelled after he reported the sisters as missing. The prosecution argued that the murders were premeditated and that the motive was likely monetary in nature due to Nicholas's extensive debts. As mentioned, Nicholas was isolated and placed on suicide watch whilst numerous psychologists would visit and attempt to speak with him. Not long after, Nicholas went on a four-day hunger strike and refused to eat any food. The police, meanwhile, continued their investigation and learned that not long before the sisters arrived, Nicholas, in his dishevelled state, visited a gun store asking for a firearm after the police had confiscated his with his reasoning being that he wanted it in case thieves broke into his home. It was during this time in isolation that Nicholas's behaviour and his mental state began to severely deteriorate and his strange habits and behaviour made themselves known. He demanded that ten of his cats be brought to his cell and that he be allowed to see his mother's body. These requests were denied as the bodies had already been sent back to Israel and it was stated that the cats would be a hygiene hazard. 
At the funeral service in Israel, relatives of the sisters stated that they did not hate Nicholas, stating that hatred would be unhealthy and not do them any good, and reiterated their belief that Nicholas was mentally unwell. The Argentine prosecutor, however, thought differently and deemed him of sound mind, and he was brought before a judge on February the 19th, 2019. The judge stated that Nicholas would behave very strangely and overreact to the simplest of questions. He stated that he didn't remember when he was born, identified himself as Floda Relti, and referred to his 37 animals as his children. The first psychiatric report stated that he was a hostile, evasive, defiant, ironic and confrontational person, that he hides and manipulates information for profit, whilst the only effective bond is with his pets. But he also believed that he was lucid and understood the legal ramifications of his actions. The prosecution and Nicholas's family requested that he be held in pretrial detention, but the defence argued that he be released but put on house arrest until the trial, stating that he wasn't a flight risk due to his relationship with his pets and that he wasn't safe in prison due to the other inmates expressing their desire to kill him. At one of the court hearings, events were postponed after Nicholas urinated himself, prompting the judge to have him removed. Before his removal, Nicholas had this to say, I don't care if I'm in jail or under house arrest, all I want is to be with my cats. If you want to send me home with 50 police officers to guard me, go ahead. I'm not interested in running away, I'm only interested in my cats. Nicholas was eventually kept in pre-trial detention with him having to be removed from the hearing as he kept making a non-stop meowing noise. He was isolated from the other inmates and wasn't there long before being put back on self-harming watch as he had threatened to take his own life if his cats were not delivered to his cell. Nicholas would often refuse to eat any food or drink any water, but he would accept milk and requested that he be given cat food or food meant for animals. He refused to shower or bathe. He would often take off his prison clothes and never use the toilet and would just urinate and defecate on his prison floor and could not be dissuaded from such behaviour. During the few times in which he was in contact with other inmates, on one such occasion, he defecated on the floor in front of a table where two other inmates were eating their lunch. Nicholas, just as the defence had feared, was attacked as another protective custody inmate stabbed him, although the injuries were not life-threatening. On another occasion, a group of inmates tried to break into his sector of the prison before riot control controlled the lynch mob. Soon the public would be able to witness his Nicholas actions in prison as a video was uploaded showing a naked Nicholas hissing, meowing and growling whilst attempting to claw at the guards once they opened the cell door. The purpose and context behind this video were the guards attempting to transfer him for a mental health evaluation. The next court hearing happened on March the 13th and Nicholas said to the judge, you may think I'm crazy, but I'm not. I see myself as a person, but I'm a cat. I have 37 children and I need to know how they are. He further requested that he be transferred from the prison and into a zoo. The judge would end this hearing by ordering that Nicholas undergo a second psychiatric evaluation and on March the 29th, he was transferred to a psychiatric hospital with this decision being in part motivated by Nicholas suddenly stripping naked in the middle of the hearing. Later, the issue of whether he could see his cats was finally put to rest once they were sent to an animal welfare organisation and then put up for adoption. More updates would come in September when Nicholas threatened to kill himself in response to prison officials forcing him to bathe, with him stating that he'd purposefully avoid eating and to just let him die. It was further alleged that during this forced bathing, the guards handcuffed and beat him. In October, his mental health would become the focal point yet again when the National Assistance Programme for Persons with Disabilities in their relations with the Administration of Justice, or the NPPDRAJ, visited the prison and later made a report stating the inmate is not receiving the necessary sanitary conditions in accordance with his procedure and care in the prison complex where he is detained. 
they then made a recommendation that he be transferred to a psychiatric hospital. A psychologist was one of those who conducted the report and interviewed Nicholas on September the 19th. This psychologist expressed the belief that he thought he was insane. The next court hearing was on February the 12th, 2020, and Nicholas had to be expelled from the court due to continuous meowing. His defence continued to argue that he was mentally incompetent, citing a previous history of mental illness in Israel and the NPP DRAJ report from September, whilst the prosecution argued against this citing the psychologist in Argentina who deemed him sane and how he didn't display any of this behaviour before his arrest. The judge at this hearing ruled that he has a personality disorder but it is not proven that he is delusional. Nicholas during this hearing had the long thick beard that he had before the murders and wore the same white shirt he wore during the first hearing which had now become stained brown. The case was continued to an unknown date later in 2020. His trial never occurred in 2020 due to COVID-19. However, he was admitted to a mental hospital for another evaluation in May, and the staff at the hospital claimed that he responded well to treatment. The trial date was set for October the 26th, 2021, and it was going to be broadcast live, not just in Argentina, but also in Israel and Australia, among other countries, with the audio being dubbed from Spanish into Hebrew and English respectively. Whilst in the hospital, he would refuse to shave, bathe or change his clothes and started losing muscle mass. During his first days in the hospital, the only things he would consume were eight litres of milk. October the 26th came and the trial would finally begin and it got off to a sensational start as numerous people watched as Nicholas, live on camera, would make a continuous meowing noise before being removed from the courtroom after refusing to stop or answer the judge and prosecutor's questions. When the judge asked, Mr. Gil Pereg, is this your name? He simply went, meow. Before entering, I warned you to be quiet, otherwise you will have to be removed to an adjoining room. Nicholas again went, meow. Various witnesses would be called, including a father and son that owned a mechanical workshop, with the two stating that they heard the sounds of gunfire and two women screaming. His neighbours were also called to testify, and they explained that they never observed him acting as if he was a cat prior to the murders. The owners of various gun and firearm stores were also questioned and stated that whenever he went to purchase weapons from them, they said that although he did act strangely, appear rather unkempt and paid only in cash with money held in a nylon bag, they testified that he never came off as insane to them. The next people called to the stand were the psychiatrists who examined him, saying his ways of living were not compatible with those of the rest of the population in his pavilion, and this put him at risk. He wrote symbols with his own excrement on the walls and did not clean himself. Another stated, in principle, I remember that he was diagnosed with a schizotypal personality disorder a way of being that makes him a person isolated from the natural environment with differential characteristics, extravagance and difficulties in social exchange. Another called by the prosecution said he was vigilant, lucid and able to communicate before adding, we did not detect alterations at the level of thought nor delusions or hallucinations. Then the last one stated, we evaluated him with a team of professionals, with interviews that lasted from two to four hours because he detailed and recounted a lot. From the first day, no alterations in his judgment were observed or detected that would prevent him from distinguishing good from bad or directing his actions. The defence team, however, countered this by producing his medical history from Israel, where he was known to have a long history of mental illness, and even called another psychiatrist from Argentina who disputed the findings of those called by the prosecution. This psychiatrist diagnosed Nicholas with paraphrenia and stated that he feels that he is a cat, he has a delusion and a thought disorder that on certain occasions he clearly uses to exaggerate or accentuate it 
in exchange for a benefit. It is a pathology in which critical judgment is altered, but in others it remains preserved. Nicholas was later permitted to speak at the trial where he denied killing anyone and said that his mother was still alive and visited him every night with him saying the following. When they arrested me, they supposedly found the bodies. In the raids, they found nothing. They have kidnapped my mother and my aunt. My mother sees me every night and talks to me. She tells me that she is kidnapped and asks me to go save her. Nicholas would also explain his background stating, For a limited time I can be like a two-legged creature and be like humans, but in my house I lived 100% like a cat. When I put the mask on my face and act like a person, it was very difficult for me. It could be like this for five or six hours. I have lived in a closed bubble. After I opened my eyes at the university, I went to the army. I saw how bad they do it and I couldn't stand it. I spent eight months locked up in the room of the house until I decided to become a cat. I was walking naked on the street and marking my territory. I lost control of my body so I talked to my mother and decided to escape. He explained that when he arrived in Argentina he had a group of two-legged creatures who helped him because he was alone and then ended his statement by stating how he didn't desire to live in this world. I'm paranoid. I can't accept this world because it's so ugly. I don't want to know anything. On November the 3rd, 2021, after two hours of deliberation, a jury unanimously found Nicholas capable of understanding the criminality of his actions and they reached a guilty verdict. He was soon after sentenced to life imprisonment with release to be considered after 35 years. Despite the sentence, however, Nicholas is not currently in prison and instead resides in a mental hospital as he has not been deemed safe or competent to be sent to prison yet due to his behaviours. The last update was on May the 8th, 2022, which describes his life at the hospital. Due to his continued refusal to bathe, he had developed thrombosis, phlebitis and a severe lice infection. Nicholas, as of late, hasn't been meowing, but he still displays other cat-like behaviours, such as refusing to bathe and sleeping in a ball. He has been described as fairly docile and heavily medicated and sedated at times. His attorneys intend on appealing the verdict and eventually have Nicholas declared criminally insane. One other video that I found included just before Nicholas was arrested. This included footage of a man remonstrating with Pereg and he broke into English to leave a very clear message. The murderer of your mother, of his mother, this will be on your grave. Thanks for listening to this case. Please add any comments down below and please like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye.